So yesterday I released a video looking at some of the footage from the brand new, newly released DJI Osmo 360 camera. We had a little bit of a look at the footage to see how it compared to something like the Insta360 X5. And overall, I was very impressed with this camera. The features and the functionality is really, really cool. Capturing though, is just one side of the story. The other story is of course, post-processing. And we touched on it slightly in the last video. I talked about a little bit about the app and the desktop app. But in this video, I'm gonna kind of talk you through the process, or at least we're gonna discover the process of offloading the footage off of the 360 camera and recomposing it in DJI's new studio app. Earlier, I went into town and I captured some shots of the cathedral on this thing. Light wasn't super good, to be honest with you, so I don't think it's gonna be the best example of footage, but it'll give us uh, something to mess around with and give you an idea of the workflow, uh, or at least one of the workflows that you can use with the DJI Osmo 360 camera. First of all, open the door of the Osmo, which conveniently has a little latch on it. Plug in our USB-C cable. And of course you're gonna get the charging thing. So we're gonna turn on the camera and it's telling me to update. One thing I've had an issue with is updating this camera. I'm getting the update prompt on the app. Um, however, when I go to upload it, it just keeps going in this continuous cycle. I don't know what I'm gonna do about it because I'm missing out on some of the latest features. Anyway, that's what that screen is for. So now it's connected. And when you first do it, it's gonna ask you if you wanna just charge it or whether you want to connect it via, uh, via USB-C for file transfer. I'm gonna leave this here now. So whenever you first connect the Osmo 360, um, it's gonna come up with this screen that gives you a little bit of a preview of what is already on the camera. There's two ways of approaching this. Uh, my traditional way has always been to take the files off of the camera and put them into a folder and then import them into uh, the, well, with Insta360, their studio program. So I was gonna approach it in the same way with this, but what I found is, is that it actually works quite well if you keep the files on the Osmo 360 and do what you need to do with the recomposition of these things, export them recomposed onto a folder on your computer and just keep the files on the camera itself. Obviously that's going to, that's not gonna work in the long term because then you'll just keep racking up files unless you delete them. And I also like to keep the 360 files as well because you never know when you're gonna to want to recompose them in a different way or maybe you're doing some talking head stuff and then eventually you realize that you want a shot in the opposite direction. So keeping those files is important. But for this example, we're just gonna take a little bit of a look. It's gonna be more of a basic look at the studio software. And we're gonna do it all whilst the camera is plugged in. So effectively, it's reading the files off of the camera. So we have the shots that I got yesterday, and then we have the shots that we have today. So I'm going to pre, so if you click on it, it'll give you a preview. Okay. So it looks like we have a download option. Oh, okay. Right, okay. So these are gonna download these to the program, I guess. So here we have downloads, I see. Okay, let's do create. All right, so it looks like the first interface is gonna give you all the preview files that are on your camera, allowing you to check out those, and then you, it wants you to create a project. So I dabbled with this yesterday, and I guess this update has allowed you to have that, that first screen wasn't available. Now we have this first screen. So in the left, you have your sources, so your local files, your downloads, and then the device itself. So if you do want to work on a workflow where you're working off of the device like this, then you can preview um, those in the left-hand side here. Then you have footage from the video. Here I have the footage from the video that I filmed yesterday. So what it allows you to do then is scroll over it, preview it this way, and then add it to a, uh, to a timeline. 
So here we can just add this in and then we can add, perhaps we can add another one here. Let's add this one to it. So this works magnetically kind of like Final Cut Pro. And what it'll allow you to do then is to recompose by dragging. Here's my extremely concentrated face and then keyframing based on where you're at. And then here you have kind of stock focal lengths here. So you have de-warped, which I think is really, really interesting. It completely de-warps everything, which is actually something that I really like. It makes it look more like a regular camera. Each time you make a movement, you're going to want to add a keyframe to the shot. That can be done with uh, Shift Option K, or you can click on the keyframe thing here, right here. And another thing that's worth noting is if you're always going to be in the same area, it might be worth just changing the mode of the camera into direction lock. So up here on the right, you have more um, specific or more uh, information based on the shot that you're doing. So we have the video, we have the image, and this is where we're going to go for direction lock. This will lock it. It's going to remove a lot of our keyframes here. But that's okay, it just means that we can we'll just redo them. So now, if we set it here, it's probably going to stay pretty much in the same um, direction now that it's recomposed. So if I play this forward, it's not really going to mess around too much as I turn, it's going to follow me as the main subject. I might have to alter it slightly and add a keyframe again. And I can also make it wider by, uh, wider by pinching on the trackpad. Now I'm not quite sure how you would do, uh, how you'd make it wider with a mouse. Uh, however, you can mess with the parameters up here in the right hand side. So we have the angle, which will give us the zoom as well as our field of view. Um, oh, this is going to be the correction to how fisheye it is. And then we're going to have our pan and our tilt as well. So technically you could, um, instead of doing this, you could just mess around with these metrics here. This also has the ability to do intelligent tracking, but you can see I don't have to keyframe it with direction lock it'll kind of keep its orientation relative to the selfie stick wherever I've put it. Um, so to check out int intelligent tracking, we're going to just click on it and then drag a box over whatever we want to track and then it will start tracking. So with uh, intelligent tracking, it's going to be in real time. So I, as of right now, there is no way of speeding this up. You basically have to watch through the footage as it tracks it. Once it tracks it, it's going to give it that tracking data and then you can recompose based on that. So say you're kind of in the middle and you want to be in the bottom half, you can then recompose there. So I can end that tracking now. And you, ha you have this little green box that shows that it has been, that you've been tracked here. So now if I re if I change that now, I'm pretty sure that that will stay that way. So there are other things that can be, um, that you can work with within this program as well. You can adjust the image as well. This is where if you're filming in log, you can add your LUT. So it's quite handy here. I have a clip here where one of these clips where I'm filming in D log M. Okay. So here I have uh, D log M. So I'm going to add this to the end. I'm going to drag this to the end here. So I'm going to go to my image, uh, adjust. I'm going to go to color recovery, click on that. And it's already got the recommended LUT. And here we have the LUT applied to it. I can then lift shadows if I want and uh, mess around with the image as I want to. You can then take that off as well. Again, if you go to none, 
can take that off and then of course you can adjust these manually as well all of the main parameters are there sharpness saturation uh, you can add a bit of a vignette to it as well so if you want to get creative in this pre um, editing like main editing pro program before you put it in Final Cut Premiere Da Vinci or anything like that that's quite handy I would say now there are there is a plugin here for Premiere Pro I've not looked at it myself but you will be able to recompose and everything DJI files at least that's my understanding within Premiere Pro I don't think I'll do a, a video about that because I don't use Premiere Pro I use Da Vinci and Final Cut but for me, to be honest with you, having the ability to stitch together multiple 360 clips and process them all in one batch and export them all in one file is actually really handy for me. I personally would prefer to cut up a, like a big 360 file with all my 360 shots than I would have them all individually and have to process them all individually. I find that the workflow this workflow is much easier than that of the Insta360 software. At least the way I've been doing it with Insta360 software is opening the clip, choosing the section that I want to export, keyframing within that, using their various different tracking methods to sort it out, and then exporting or adding to an export queue, and then moving on to the next one. Insta360 software is good because it will allow you for one clip to create multiple timelines with different keyframing. So for one clip, you can keyframe things like different ways and add those to an export queue and you can have 10 different clips from the one clip and then you can go back and reference and tweak those, which is really, really good. But I also really like this way of doing a little project, exporting everything in one go. I think it's a really good way of working. I want to make a quick correction. So I've been using the Insta360 software in one way, which is editing each clip individually. But there is actually a whole project and timeline section to the software where you can actually completely make a video with all of your clips and reframe them within a project setting very similar to DJI's studio app. There are other tools up here on the left hand side such as filters and stuff like that if that's what you want to use and music. I think this is also giving people a way to edit their footage that maybe don't have any other non-linear editing programs as well but the tools are very limited. It's very much slice trim and then keyframing as well and tracking. So some of the keyboard shortcuts are similar to Premiere Pro here. So you have Q and W, so trim to the left and trim to the right. And I'm sure there are some more that I've not really dug into, but that will be very familiar to you as well. And then also you can adjust the parameters within keyframes. So if you zoom in, you can click on the in-between piece and here we have some animations in between. So fast in, slow out. This will allow that to quickly feel comfortable and vlogging with slowly pan into the shot. Um, and there are various other ones as well. Slow in, slow out. I would feel comfortable vlogging with... So these will be different animation styles based on what you want. So you can get quite creative with that. So there are plenty of options for recomposing your footage here for adding a bit of a color grade to it, adding LUTs, adding some in, uh, animation to each one of the transitions, and then also changing the perspective really easily. In particular, I really like the de-warp tool. It really does turn it into an image that looks like it could have come from perhaps the Osmo Pocket 3 or just a regular camera. It's pretty insane what they can do now with 360 cameras. So what do I think they can improve? Well, First error I found, and this might be to do with the fact that my computer isn't fast enough to process it, but if you're doing long talking head segments, so if I grab something that is perhaps, let's do a 59 second, no, let's do one minute, one minute and 30 or whatever. So if I'm recomposing, doing a lot of recom recomposition on long talking head segments, I find that the audio drifts from the visuals, especially if I'm adding a lot of keyframes and a lot of motion, it doesn't take very long before those have a mismatch. 
And once they do have a mismatch, I find it takes a long time, if if, if at all, for it to re-correct itself. That corrects itself though in the export. When you open that exported file, it will all be okay. But it's kind of disconcerting whenever you're editing it in this software. And it also is kind of off-putting as well, especially if you're trying to time up different talking head segments. So I found that that was an issue. And the other thing that they don't have is motion blur. And that's something that the Insta360 software has. There's like an ND motion blur feature. And then changing the speed is a lot easier as well. There is a speed option up here as well where we can change the speed. But I think that that changes the speed of the whole clip. So therefore you have to clip your clip up into bits and just speed up that one section. Whereas Insta360 lets you take a section of the clip, speed it up, um, and it doesn't affect the rest of the clip as well. So once you're done, then you can go up to the export and then I can set my resolution and my frame rate parameters and my bit rate and as well as noise, uh, noise reduction and 10 bit color. And I can export in a 16 by nine format or whatever I've chosen. These are my options. And then of course I can set it into a panoramic view as well which will give me an equirectangular image so I can recompose that in my editing software as well. Right, so that is a quick little look at DJI's studio app to help you recompose the footage from your DJI Osmo 360 camera. If you want to check out some of the footage and some of my first impressions of the Osmo 360, go check out the video that's gonna be probably linked to the end of this. I'll put it in the description down below. Is this a workflow that works well for you? Are you a bit of a diehard with the Insta360 Studio software? Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Subscribe if you feel so inclined and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.